talking to Ray Tamara. Now, most people would call Ray a paparazzi, and I know he doesn't like that name. So, what do you call yourself, Ray? Uh, I'm a working New York photographer. I shoot street and events. Right. So, you call it a street shooter? Street shooter, whatever. I mean, just as long as I get the shot, that's the most important thing. Right. But Ray does do what most people call paparazzi, which I think is a little unfair because it's kind of like a derogatory term. People act like these guys that do what they call paparazzi are not good photographers. I disagree because I see Ray's work all the time and it's fantastic and Ray can nail a shot in like two and a half seconds of someone running from a car into a building. He does a great job. The clip we're really doing today is the what's in my bag clip. So start unzipping as I narrate this. So I don't know why people like what's in my bag videos. I absolutely love them. I've watched Joe McNally's videos and Bruce Peterson's and I've done a couple of my own fronts in the bag. And I don't know, there's something fascinating about that. So who makes this bag right uh, this is, I just picked this up a week ago, and this is a Kata 3-in-1 bag. It's now, an, I've never heard of Kata. Is it an actual camera bag? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're pretty prominent. They make both of camera bags and video, video camera bags. Right. Now, so, did you see it on before you started zipping it? Uh, what I liked about this bag is that it's unobtrusive. It doesn't necessarily look like a camera bag, and it's low, the low profile. Now, a lot of the other camera bags, they're really big and a lot of padding. What I noticed about the bag was that it was smoother than most bags. My donkey bags have a lot more pockets on the outside than this bag does. Right? And you like this, you wear it with that strap on the bottom too sometimes, you say. Uh, yep, yep. No, it's important for me because this bag, the equipment I have in this bag, it's 30 pounds. So what I want to do is I want this bag to be as tight around my shoulders as possible and cinched around my waist so that it can take the weight off of my shoulders. I have to run with this bag, so it's important that I can be able to move. Um, the, the bag is a low profile. And another thing is it doesn't look like a camera bag. Right, and you put the laptop in here also. Uh, yes, yes. It does have, a, this is the latest version of the Katza 3-in-1, and it does have a sleeve for the laptop. This is the main compartment. We'll take the snaps off here. And what, one of the reasons why I got this bag is because, for me, I use cameras that I need to be able to access them. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that as effectively as possible with this bag. You need if to you be quick in other words. Yes, and if you open up the bag, you can see that there's a D3 with a 300. Now let's take that out a second. So you keep the lens on the body, of course, you can just whip it out and start shooting as quick as possible. Yes. Now there's like a little sock on here, is this to keep it warm so or something so it doesn't get frostbite? Uh, no, no. For the 300, you just prevent brassing, um, just so it, it'll, it won't get dinged up as much as it as more than it could. Right. Now, when I was looking at this earlier today, you had this kind of interesting strap. So um, explain the whole thing to me. I don't know if it's interesting or not. The thing that the thing that um, another street photographer told me about is that since this is such a heavy lens, this is a 300, and uh, attached to the body, sometimes everything happens so fast that you're not able to snap and make sure that it's on correctly, or it can possibly come off. Yeah, and so, the Nikon button is kind of big, right? Like I've never had a lens fall off, but the Nikon release button, if you were to make any complaint about the D3, which is hard because it's such a great camera, this button is rather large and I've heard of people accidentally pushing the button and having a lens disengage. Hasn't happened to me yet, but I don't tend to do a lot of on the street quick shooting anyway. So, but go on, so let's suppose the lens fell off, what would happen here? So if the lens fell off and it wasn't, I mean, it just slipped off, which hopefully it never does. And it's already, it won't necessarily separate from the body. Right. So if this is on my shoulder and or around my neck and it came off, it would still not fall to the ground. Right, because it's connected with this yeah. little, I don't know, mountain climber clamp thing or something. I don't know what yep. you're going to call it. And then just a little, it's, it's a keys. You can do a couple of various things to it. Um, again, another street photographer, his name is Santiago Baez. And uh, he thought about this and uh, he right. showed it to me. Okay, the next thing in the bag is uh, another D3 with a 70 to 200 attached. So again, this is a, 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 a lens that I use pretty much for a, a lot of the time, predominantly a lot of my shots, be, especially with the D3 in the full frame. Right, now why not get another 70 to 200 with a teleconverter instead of three? It would be smaller, you could use this at a higher ISO and you'll be fine, and it would certainly be a lot cheaper than that $5,000 lens. Um, I've tried it. 
and uh, you know what? You can, that is an option, but then there's, a, there's other shots where you just need a 300. Right. And it's a 300 with the teleconverter also, I guess. Right? Yeah, so that you can um, you have more reach. At the end of the day, because it's a full frame camera, you're you you I'm working with another a straight 300. So sometimes I need that extra reach. It's not the 1.5 conversion of the D2X, so I need that extra extra reach. Right. Okay. What else is in the bag? Let's see the other compartments uh, here. So that was in the main compartment, and then finally. This is the top compartment, and this is how I've set it up, and I'm still trying to figure out the optimal way to set it up. This is a bracket, a straight bracket. This is the flash. Cord for the battery. Battery. And these are great, right? The small turbo. Mm -hmm. I love this thing, the turbo SC. It goes forever, especially nowadays that you can shoot your event pictures at like ISO 1000. You don't need as much battery power as before. So this is a great battery, and Ray likes this uh, fifth battery. I really hate that fifth battery thing. I think it just throws off the whole dynamic and balance of the flash, but I've argued with Ray many times about this, but Ray really likes it, so there's the fifth battery holder. And then finally, these are the, um, the other lenses that I use. Um, this is the, 70, the, the 24 to 70, and you can see that there's, um, there's rubber bands around here. It's frustrating because these, um, these uh, plastic straps, they, the, rubber, no, the rubber gets loose right. um, if you're in the rain. And this is to make it in place, put them back in place so that I can turn it. Because when I'm shooting in the rain and it doesn't attach or it doesn't con have contact, then right. I'm just spinning it around and not, and not happening. Yeah, right. nothing's happening. So I have that. Okay. Um, this is the teleconverter, 1.4 teleconverter that we were talking about, and uh, I don't get a chance to use this as much, right. but it's in the bag. The 200 and the 300, most of the times you won't need it. And then finally, this is what I just put in the bag. Um, this is a lens that I'm still trying to use. This is an old 28 to 200, and this is for the Premiere so that I can get a full length and then also a headshot. Now by Premiere, you mean if you're shooting a movie Premiere, you can yep. get a shot, a headshot, and mm -hmm. instantly zoom out to a head to toe, because right. again, you got to be able to shoot quickly. Yeah, right. so this is um, something that I, it's, it's a 3556, five, and it's, I have trouble focusing with it, so I don't well, like to absolutely use it, right. it's but I have it. Lens. It's a, not a fast lens in terms of aperture, not fast in terms of focusing, and it's an old design. It's not the AFS lens, so it's really not made to be used professionally, and it, you're seeing the limitations of it. Yep, um, basically this is for short from the car to the, the, the door, and this is for longer shots, and I'd you shoot. When the celebrity is going from the car to the hotel yeah, room, uh -huh. some yeah. Place. And this is I shoot Letterman, uh, the guest arriving at Letterman every day, and I like this lens because it's a 70 to 200, and the way it's set up, I can get a full length, and when they go in the door, I can get the tight head shot, and I can do this with the 70 to 200 because it's a full frame camera. Right. And when do you use the? Uh, the, the, the D three hundred. Excuse me. The three hundred on the D three. I use this a lot when I'm at the movie sets. When I need that extra reach, and um, when because they don't necessarily like to have us right on top of them, so I need to be farther further away. Okay. Last thing. What is the one thing people need to understand about the street shooters? Um. What the. That. That. The celebrities and the street shooters, we all exist together. Like, I'm taking pictures of celebrities, and they probably want the shots in the magazines because they want the coverage. Certainly, the public wants the shots in the magazine well, and wants to see. Sells, basically. basically. And what's the frustrating part is when people come up and they think that we're doing a disservice to people. Like, a lot of the times, the the, the celebrities, they call us to shoot them. And then you have a, a passerby thinking that they're trying to save the celebrity and trying to jump in the shot or put their hands in the camera. And basically, you're, do, you're doing a disservice to everyone because you're trying to be a hero and nobody wants that. Right. And I would say if I had one thing I'd want people to know about the street shooters is that you guys are actually very good photographers. I mean, these guys have to balance like on-camera flash with daylight in two or three seconds. And then the next minute they're shooting available light only. You know, they really shoot very quickly. And 
I admire that. So Ray's stuff is on GettyImages.com too. You can search his name, Ray Tamara, R-A-Y, T-A-M-A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. You just go to the Getty Images website and you can search and see all of Ray's marvelous stuff. Thank you, Ray.